Yeah, so a lot's happened. No, it's like you, you can you can look at the accolades and accolades are, are awesome. We we hit the, the 500,000 list, which uh, that was a big deal for me because I know in 2010, I wrote my first life list ever. And it's like 102 items and one of the items is like 30 or 40 something. I actually posted it on my, on my personal blog years ago. It's up there publicly. But it was growing 505,000 company. And I had no clue how it was gonna happen. I had no clue what company it was gonna be. I didn't even feel that I could do it because I'm like, well, how am I going to build a multi, multi, multi million dollar a year company when I've never done that before? We hit that. Like, that's really cool. We hit uh, 699 on the list, and also uh, we're the fastest growing software company in Oregon, which, which is crazy. Like I'm, I'm sitting here looking out our offices here in downtown Roseburg, Oregon, and we're in a small town. We're in, we're in rural America, rural Oregon. Um, you're not supposed to be growing the fastest growing software company in Oregon in the world. Spreading that like vision of what Carrot's going to become, spreading that vision of how we're going to be impacting our community locally. And the last thing is um, the start of the year we decided, hey, rather than waiting, we've always wanted to have like the perfect causes to get to, right? I guess you get more successful in business, you go, well, once I hit this amount of income, then I'll start giving. The funny thing is like giving happens even when you're broke. It's about creating a habit. It's about creating a pattern. And we hadn't created the habit or pattern. We were giving, but it wasn't consistently. It wasn't it wasn't something where we had the giving muscle nail. And so we created the giving program at the start of the year, giving away a percentage of our gross revenue to causes that amplify our core values. And this summer we gave away our biggest trek, which was really awesome, 7,500 bucks to an amazing local uh, cause that just amplifies almost every single core value here at Cary. This is the Umpqua Valley Bicycle Outreach. It really started at Casa de Belen. My wife and I moved to the area, found out about homeless teens, and they were living at Casa de Belen. And after volunteering there for, I don't know, eight months, saw a room of bicycles just like sitting there in piles and in parts. So pulled up a stand, some tools, and had some kids walk by. As in the hallway, I was just wrenching on bikes, and kids would show up and hang out and talk. And, before we knew it, we had like a bunch of kids on bikes. And then the best thing to do after you fix a bike is ride it. So we'd start taking a ride down Stewart Park. It was awesome. Now we ride a lot and we repair a lot more. Trevor and Carrot have been a total blessing. I remember starting out not having a trailer, not having a van, not having anything, and just trying to figure out what am I supposed to do? What is, you know, what's God trying to turn this into? And then suddenly we, you know, Investor Carrot says, hey, we, let, let me buy you some bikes. Um, our van right now is really bad shape and it's like all right driving this to Glendale one day and we're all over the road. It's like, dude, I have no clue how we're gonna make another van happen. And then you have a guy like Trevor from Carrot just ask like, dude, what do you guys need right now? I hate talking about money, but we need a van. Well, what does that run? 15 grand, you know, for a decent one. And he has the ability to meet one of our needs and says, I'll make a match. And then that allows us to work for it and making us work for it. We get to be into the community, asking, sharing with people what we're doing. So um, yeah, we wouldn't be here and the short amount of time that this program's been here without people like Trevor and Investor Carrot investing into us. So uh, we're here today and shoot, I remember four or five, six months ago I was talking to Yaku and all the work that they've been doing that previous year just really inspired the heck out of me. Because I know as an entrepreneur, it's not easy to start something. It's way harder to follow through once the hard times uh, hit you. And it's really cool uh, seeing when a business person or someone that's looking to make an impact in no matter what capacity, a nonprofit, a business, finally gets momentum and hits the impact mode. And that's what we've seen them uh, doing. And uh, anytime we look at, at, at contributing towards or supporting anything, whether it's another business, a partner of ours, a nonprofit, I always wanna make sure that they're the ones that are willing to stick it through the hard times so they can really make that impact. And that's what they're doing. When he tossed the need out that they have on getting a new van, on uh, replacing old blue or whatever they, whatever you guys call, uh, replacing the van, um, I just knew that that was something that we had the ability with what we've been blessed with here at Carrot to really help them out with. Insanely pumped 
to to give the match and they raised it the other mat the rest of the match way quicker than honestly i thought we were, they were gonna i saw the post on facebook the other day they raised the whole match for the 7500 bucks and we've got a check for 7500 bucks to give them today so we're excited about it yeah cool man so i got i got the big check here nice. one of two it's so like i was saying <laughs> this one's 61 23 then the rest of it's going to come next week in another check that's uh, the way it is, but dude, I'm insanely excited to, to give you that check. We appreciate you guys and so proud, much. Proud of the work that you guys are doing. Um, you keep up the good work. Uh, hopefully there's a lot more where that came from as you guys expand out more and can impact more too. And I'm, I'm excited to get that out of our wallets and over to you guys where it does a lot of good, man. So great work. Back again for the last and finale. It's it's a bittersweet moment at the Fisher Barn, I think. Elk season is like, it's that cherished moment that 30 days out of the September, you know, and we shared our adventures with you and we're excited for like all the other adventures that we always do. I mean, that's, I think our whole thing at Born and Raised, it's literally, it doesn't matter if you're hunting, you're fishing, you're spending time outdoors with family, like any of that stuff is precious to us. So the work that goes into during elk season, that's the fun part of it. The grind behind the scenes, making this all thing come together. Our family sacrifice, us not only being gone in September, but the time of post-production and spending the weekends here and late nights and all that. I think the biggest thing for me is like, as an entrepreneur, I, the struggle on a daily is stress. Like. It just eats at me. Don't sleep good, don't eat good, don't exercise good. And then when I don't do that, the vicious cycle like gets worse and worse. And sometimes like just gotta take a breath and you know, work through it versus get in my head wrapped around like, oh no, this isn't, you know, and then it just compounds and then it's 10 o'clock and I don't, I'm not in the office yet. So I mean, like dealing with stress, I think is, is one, um, it's a biggest struggle for me and I'm hoping that I can work through some things and you know, having a business partner like Trent, you know, is huge for me. You know, having someone that I look up to in a lot of ways, so. If you're thinking about the entrepreneurship journey and like doing it to make more money, buy more things, like, maybe reconsider the why. Sometimes we definitely like get so much in the weeds we lose perspective like this is you know and I'll go through DMs and people like hey I want to start a business how did you get started like yeah. people aspire to do what we're able to do like totally blessed about it but sometimes you just don't have that like and that's where it comes back like every time gratitude kind of reset like Dude, we got an office supporting the family like get to go do all this cool crazy stuff like what more does more a guy want If you work on yourself, if you get the me part right, gives you a chance to do the last thing, which I want on my tombstone, which is leave a legacy. This isn't a legacy about my name and my ego. It's a legacy of values. It kind of gives us good direction, reaching for our potential, impacting your world, and leaving a legacy. You're, you know that you're reaching for your potential when you're growing. You know that you're impacting your world when you're serving. And you know you're leaving a legacy if you're transferring. Now for me, this kind of serves as a mission statement. Gratitude is the power behind it. And then I take this grid and I make decisions in life and, and, and in business and saying, does it line up with this? Because if it doesn't really line up with this, it's not something that is gonna be sustainable for me because this I'm convicted about. This is something I gotta do. The core message is as driven entrepreneurs, we wrestle to find satisfaction through our achievement. I would challenge you to think about the role you have with gratitude because gratitude is, is a game changer. It's a lens that moves you to a new place. And so I am still driven, 
But I spend a lot more time thinking about, all right, I'm not trying to get something that I need. I actually have what I need. And now I can move forward from this place of abundance. Like, I, I've got it. I've been given more than I ever thought I'd have. So now I can serve, I can do these things as an expression of what I have. But gratitude helps me look at reality and say, this is what I've been given. It's not about chasing new stuff. It's about expressing thanks and going after them from this place of abundance. So my encouragement to you is as you think about life and direction and making your mark in this world because we all want to do that. Start that journey with gratitude. Against all advice, against all norms, without the resources of the big cities. We chose to chase these dreams, to build amazing businesses here in small town Oregon where we love to call home because, well, we want to. We believe big things can happen in small places. You can chase your dreams no matter what people tell you is possible. With one single mission. To prove to you, to prove to ourselves. That the only requirement for achieving your dreams is your willingness to chase them.